What's up everybody? It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon and my project today is to build this portable basketball hoop. Uh, the kids had a great time at basketball camp this week and uh, I honestly miss playing too so I'm gonna build this thing and then we're gonna have just crazy games of horse in the driveway. People online were saying it took four to five hours to build this thing. Okay, I'm already impressed. Look how they separate the hardware here. Isn't that nice? I was dreading that there would just be a bag of stuff all jumbled together in there. I also like instructions that tell you exactly what you need right up front. Tools, need a couple humans. Uh, I'm gonna need some music. Love me some Moog. If I ever got the chance to meet Marty and Moog, uh, first of all, I will tell them how much I love Mighty Car Mods and how much of an impact it's had on me. And then next, I would tell them, uh, tell Moog how much I love his music. Um, the kids and I jam out to it all the time in the van and around the house. It's just my favorite stuff. Oh, this is my jam right here. Ooh, too much, too much, too much. There we go. Not bad, not bad. What's up everybody? Back at it again today in the Turbo Garage. Uh, today's work is going to consist mainly on uh, the t t accessories that we took off the old Galan engine. We're going to clean those up, get them all ready to bolt on the new Talon engine, and uh, hopefully I can get that oil pan sealed up today and just overall make good progress on getting the engine ready to go back in the Galan. So let's get to it. What's up everybody? Okay, it's a new day in the garage. Got a bunch to do. Now yesterday I just took on a bunch of little tasks, uh, you know, cleaning off old gasket material off the intake manifold, uh, you know, cleaning off the turbo manifold where the gasket was, um, cleaning up that oil pan, which took a long time, uh, and then installing the oil pan. So just a bunch of other little cleanup things I did I didn't necessarily record, but today I'm ready to start assembling stuff on that engine, so let's get to it. Okay, our first job of the day could be a little bit of a bear. Um, since I'm now feeding the turbocharger oil feed off of the oil filter housing, we have to get this plug out. And they can be really impossible from what I've read. I haven't done it in ages. I may have never done it. I don't know, it's been so long. But uh, I, I've got it soaking in some PB Blaster. I don't know if that'll help. Usually you have to heat it up or something from what I've read, so I'm gonna get on this thing. So the oil filter housing has claimed its first victim, this quality Duralast Allen socket. Whoop, it just <laughs> stripped it right out of there. So I'm gonna try to take a little heat to it and that should do the trick. Success! Well, after breaking that first socket, I wasn't sure how this was all gonna go. But uh, just a little bit of heat is all it needed, just a tiny bit. And uh, we were able to get that right out of there. And the threads are in good shape. 
So that went much better than I uh, thought it might. So here's the turbo oil feed kit that I got from Extreme PSI. You see it comes with this AN line. One end has a 90 degree and the other end is straight. And then there's the fitting, the oil fitting that goes into the turbocharger with a crush washer. And then this is actually what we're screwing into our oil filter housing. And I'll have to look and see what the best way to clock this thing will be. We'll uh, see once we get it in there. All right, so what you'll find if you start threading this guy in, you get a few threads in and you run into that sensor. So we'll just have to take that thing out of there. Okay, we got some thread sealant on there, and we can thread her in. So that is a tight little window that that thing fits in there. You see we've got plenty of room between the housing and the line. And if you go around this way, We've got a good gap of air between the sensor there and the line, and you can easily thread that line on and off. So I believe that's our best spot there. We'll see once we get it on the engine and everything. All right, since we won't be threading anything on there for a while, let's just go ahead and cover it up there. There we go. All right, so this is my workstation for the foreseeable future here. I've got the tools I need all spread out. See the oil filter housing? We're about to bolt that thing on. I've got my various gaskets and such and other parts we'll be using. There's my torque wrench. There's the service manual and there's the gasket we're using for the oil filter housing. And uh, of course we have our two engines here. Our nice refreshed engine and our tired old engine right there. One really simple tip is when you're assembling your new engine, throw in spark plugs right away because um, it's real easy for something to fall down in there. You guys probably have a better memory than I do, but I have to do stuff like this in order to stay organized. Okay, it's water pump time. Now the water pump, this is off the Gallant. It wasn't very old and it checks out, so we're gonna use that one. Got it all cleaned up, ready to go. One interesting thing about the water pump is uh, all the different torque figures of these bolts here. So, just something to note if you're ever in there doing that. Okay, now it's time to swap over the upper valve train stuff from the Gallant engine over to our new freshened up old Talon engine. <laughs> That's a mouthful. First thing I like to do when I take all the caps off that run along here, all the cam caps, is uh, just like to put them somewhere with some kind of basic reference diagram since they are position specific. And even though they're marked, and that would be plenty enough uh, just to go by all the marks on there, it's just an extra little peace of mind step that I've done over the years. So many of you probably know this, but these are my old HKS 272 cams. 
that have been in so many different cars. <laughs> I'll have to sit down and figure out how many, but uh, they've been around the block a few times, let's say that. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit, I've installed all the lifters and rockers and uh, time to slap the cams in. Here's our tightening procedure. Yes, there's a thunderstorm going on outside. <laughs> it sounds like World War III. All right, there we go, got it all in place. Sometimes you see some weird stuff in the service manual that's kind of fun, check this out. So if you look at this intake manifold, it looks pretty normal until you zoom in. Oh, look at that, Cyclone. Mitsubishi teasing us with the Cyclone intake. Okay, I know I've jumped ahead a few steps here, uh, but anywho, I'll just give you the latest. Water pipe is on. All the water lines actually are all hooked up and ready to go, except for the ones that uh, hook directly to the turbo, of course. Um, let's see, what else? We've got the intake manifold on, fuel rail in place. Look at this thing, coming together. All the timing stuff is in place. You got the AC bracket, the engine mount, Got our cam angle sensor, all of this stuff bolted on, and it's looking like an engine. All right, let's hang this turbo. All right, everybody. Well, we've got the engine pretty well buttoned up, so we're at the point now um, where I can put it in time and install the timing belt. But before I do that, I want to, um, I'm going to prime the oil pump. I put a little oil in there, and I'm going to prime the oil pump to make sure everything looks good and the oil's pumping up through the cylinder head. So let's do that now. Okay, that went well, so let's put the oil cap back on and get to work to time in this thing. Okay, I think I'm in the ballpark here. Um, boy, I had to really refresh my memory. I hadn't changed a timing belt in quite a while and uh, needed to read up on all my VFAQ and service manual stuff. But uh, now it's time to turn it over and see if we got it all right. One. Two. Okay, so uh, everything lines up after our six turns. 
Now we need to wait 15 minutes. We'll recheck our tensioner clearance here. And if it all looks good, we can put the cover on and keep trucking. Okay, it's a little while later. We've spun it over a few more times. Everything's lined up. And we're ready to throw the cover on. Since all of these little bolts are different lengths, um, I just use an old cover to store them in while I'm installing the new one. Okay, look at our parts stash. It's almost down to nothing here. So we've got our front engine mount, there's the power steering bracket, there's the AC bracket, there's the pulleys that go on the water pump, and here we have a couple of crank pulleys. On the left is the fluid damper that I had on my Talon. I didn't have it on there for very long, so it's practically brand new. And on the right is the stock pulley, which is very well known for this rubber ring here separating. And then the outer part, which has the grooves on it, sort of separating from the inner part, which can cause all sorts of mayhem, can cause your belts to fly off, can, I mean, the thing can shoot off of the actual car. It just can be very problematic. And uh, if you have one of these cars, you should immediately check yours. It's very common to have this happen. Yeah, that area right there, you can actually see the crack forming. Right around the outside there. So I think we're taking this one off just in time. Oh my gosh, lining these up is so much easier to do outside of the car. It's very, very tricky to do when, when you're doing this job with the engine in the car. This thing is almost fully dressed. So we'll get it off here, and then while it's on the hoist, we'll throw on these clutch parts, and then back into the galon it goes. All right, everybody, I think that's enough for today. I've had enough of this hot garage, that's for sure. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.